Hello, everyone. I'm Ward Appletons. I'm the project manager of Obus, the Ocean Biodiversity Information System. Our ocean provides essential services to humankind. And we all know that a healthy ocean teeming with life performs these services much more effectively. However, our ocean's biodiversity continues to be threatened. And to counter global environmental issues and ensure the sustainable use of marine resources, we need data-driven research to inform conservation and ocean management. We have seen from the previous presentation by Aaron Satterway that a lot of data already exists. But the challenge lies in finding, accessing and making sense of the myriad of existing but dispersed pieces of data. And what makes this endeavor even more challenging is that data are often not encoded following international data standards and best practices. Also, they often lack the necessary contextual metadata that is required to correctly reuse the data. For 20 years now, we have been building a central global platform that provides free access to the world's ocean biodiversity and biogeographic data. OBIS emanates from the census of marine life. In 2000, when OBIS received its first funding, the press release reported that the ultimate vision of OBIS was that of an individual selecting any area or volume of water on a global map to bring up information on, one, on what, what, what has been reported to live there. OBIS would enable access by scientists and others to historical data on species distribution and abundance and provide a framework into which newly collected data can be placed. Today, OBIS integrates over 60 million presence records from 3,691 data sets of nearly 150,000 marine species. And to give you an idea, this year, we added 6 million records from 574 new data sets. That is more than one new data set per day. Interestingly, the number of biotic and abiotic measurements and sampling facts now surpasses the amount of occurrence records. Realizing its importance, governments assumed the responsibility for OBIS when the member states of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, or IUC of UNESCO, adopted OBIS in 2009. OBIS became a project of IUC's International Oceanographic Data Information Exchange Program, or IODE. OBIS operates as a collaborative network of regional and thematic nodes, and the global OBIS network promotes a culture of cooperation and sports training and capacity development while also maintaining partnerships around the globe with organizations such as the Marine Biodiversity Observation Network, or MBOM, the Global Ocean Observing System, or GOOSE, and the Global Biodiversity Information Facility, or GBIF. A lot of human and financial resources have been and are being invested into the collection of a vast amount of biodiversity data, ranging from records of small microorganisms to megafauna from the tropics to the poles, and from the surface to the deepest trenches. The more than 60 million records in OBIS is a compilation of this diversity. The core of OBIS are the presence and absence data. These records can represent point locations, but it can also be part of line transects from trawling, or polygons, or even a point in a grid for cases where the exact location cannot be disclosed. Already from the beginning, OBIS also captured abundance data, which represents the number of individuals of a species in a given area or volume of seawater or sediment. This is a key metric for the conservation of species and the management of species populations like fish stocks. Because the impact of environmental change will happen first at the abundance level and may not be detected immediately in species presence absence data. Half of the data in OBIS, about 
30 million records are from sampling events that happened before 2000 when all this started. And we have 4 million records from before the 70s. So a lot of our effort have focused on digitizing historic records preserved in archives, libraries, and museum collections. These older data provide us an important baseline that enables comparative analysis over time. Recently, Obus holds data on habitats, such as live coral cover and seagrass meadows. These, habitats, these habitat ecosystems are often near the coast, provide and support key ecological services, but are under increased stress from human activities. Monitoring the, monitoring the status and change of key habitats is one of the priorities of the Global Ocean Observing System. Also recent additions to OBIS are tracking data from tagged animals that are tracked via satellites or acoustic receivers. Animal tracking helps us understand the dynamics of animal movements, discover migration pathways and connectivity between areas, which is important information for more effective conservation and management. It all starts with the over 1000 data providers and or data stewards who are willing to publish the data in the public domain. The data is standardized and quality controlled at the 31 regional or thematic OBIS nodes from where the central system harvests the data, performs an extra QC step, and publishes the integrated set. The API web service powers the OBIS mapper, the R package, and third-party applications, where data can be discovered and downloaded free of charge. Capacity development is an essential activity in OBIS. So far, we have trained more than 300 people from 71 countries and 23 training courses. These training courses are organized in partnership with networks such as EMONAD in Europe and MBOM in the US. Our training courses are hosted and available via the e-learning platform of the Ocean Teacher Global Academy. Trainees are trained in applying the Dalrick course standards, using our QC tools, publishing the data and doing analysis on the data. The application of OBIS data ranges from scientific research and conservation management to impact assessments and ocean governance. More than 1,500 publications have cited OBIS so far, of which several high impact papers, and more and more of them are reporting on the impact of climate change. To test this science paper from Maria Dornelas, the analysis showed that climate change shrank, widened, and overall altered species ranges. Permanently, permanently transforming communities. For this work led by Mark Costello, which identified 30% of the ocean that is of immediate conser conservation concern, responding to a call from the International Union of the Conservation of Nature, IUCN, to protect 30% of the ocean. OBIS data is regularly recommended as a trusted source and is used for environmental impact assessments, such as for the extraction of valuable resources via mining or the exploitation of wave and wind energy. The future of data-driven policymaking will rely on good data and sharing of information, the collect, the collect once, use many times principle. The standardized and historic data compiled in OBIS, for instance, allows to improve country statistics for reporting on the state of the environment. The UN World Ocean Assessment and global and regional assessments under the Intergovernmental Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services use and recommend OBIS as a trusted source. Ultimately, free access to data removes historic barriers of inequality and allows everyone to tackle marine concerns based on the best information available. Lastly, I wish to thank all the supporters, the donors and the thousands of scientists and the hundreds of data managers who have been involved and contributed to OBIS. Without their efforts, we would not have this fantastic resource to use today and in the future by our, our children. Thank you.